Hello everyone. Uh, this week we're going to be going over some week's six items as outlined in the schedule. So we're going to be going over get and post routes. We're also going to be going over making calls to an API and grabbing some data from an API. We're going to be going over JSON return from an API, which is something that you all should be somewhat familiar with. We're also going to be going over some CSV return from an API. That's useful for working with APIs that only return CSV, which there are some that do. And uh, also when working with uh, Excel, because Excel, some Excel tables can be returned as CSV. You can read from an Excel table and grab it as CSV and use it in your program. So what we're going to do first is, well, of course, we're going to start up a new .NET Core project. This is just the stock project, the uh, Get Weather Forecast project. I didn't change much. I just got rid of some of the unnecessary stuff like the weather forecast and also like the uh, unnecessary stuff here and then I changed this return to string just that I wouldn't have any errors in the console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to look at this here API. So this is a trading economics API. This returns JSON and it's a list of a whole bunch of commodities. And that's not what I want. There we go. If I scroll through this we can see that we got a bunch of, econ of a bunch of commodities here. So these commodities, of course, have properties. And to use these properties, we have to create an object, aka a model, in our program. So I'm going to grab these here. I'm going to grab a, a couple of these. Just copy those. I'm going to paste them in here, just so that we can use them for uh, creating our class. So down here I'm going to create a new class. Public class commodities. Commodities, I hope I spelled that right. And the commodity of course has a symbol, so public string symbol. And I'm just going to do control D on this. So control D just creates the same line over and over again. So a symbol ticker, country, date, state, and close. We're just going to work with these. That should be good. We, do we have our name here? We do not have our name, so I'm going to add a name property here. Save that, and this should build. We can also just do this, build solution. Looks like it built properly. So once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back here. So this is what it's gonna return. So we gotta work with this here data. So right away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the Newtonsoft package slash library. So I'm gonna open up NuGet package manager. and then look up Microsoft or it might even pop up here or maybe not <laughs> so Microsoft dot ASP net core and there it is Newtonsoft JSON accept all these here things and I have on another screen what we have to add to our program.cs. Go to my program.cs. We have an add controller here. And here it is. Builder.services.add controllers. Add Newtonsoft JSON just so that we can use it in our program and not run into any issues. So I'm going to go back to my security controller.cs. And we have to read this here information. So what we have to do is we have to create an object so that we can read that information. And that object is, let's see if I can pull it up. Have it here on another screen. It's uh, an HTTP client. So I'm going to go ahead and create that HTTP client right here. So HTTP client, client equals new client. And what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to create an expando object, so dynamic. I'm going to make this nullable, 
So that question mark means that this object here is nullable. If you use var, this just this is implicit typing, so the type gets assigned at uh, during compilation slash runtime, depending on when you run this portion of the program. So it it can save a little bit of programming space here. I'm going to include this here. So system dynamic, and I'm also going to create a string result. So we're going to try to do the following. And we need to grab an HTTP response message just to make sure that this uh, this API returned the right stuff. So HTTP response message response. I might have misspelled that. It's equal to client dot get async because this is a get route from this here API. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Postman, grab this here API call paste it in here make sure that this looks good it's gonna be returning JSON and we're gonna grab the result of that so dot result what we're gonna do then is we're gonna ensure uh, a success code so we're gonna do response dot ensure success code and we're gonna assign the result of this here stuff this here API call to the string result so result is equal to response dot content and that showed up there read strings async dot result we're going to catch this here exception in case anything were to happen and I'm just going to return a bad request and before I even do that I have to change this here from string to an action result of type list of type commodity and I think I have commodities there this would probably be better named as just commodity This commodities would be our list. So what we can do here now is we're going to grab this here information. And here we're going to return, well before we grab that information we're just going to return a bad request in case we run into an exception. Return that message. And here we're going to leave this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to want to deserialize that result into a we're going to want to convert it into a list of type commodity so list of type commodity list is equal to new list of type commodity we could also do var list that would also work and then what we can do here is now that we have it created we could go down here and do list and uh, or not do list but assign the deserialized uh, JSON into that list or we could also do this here you can just do JSON convert dot deserialize object oh the keyboard is being funny I'm gonna add my Newton soft stuff here So that we don't run into any issues. Deserialize object. And we're going to deserialize this into a list of type commodity. And what are we going to deserialize from? This here result. So if we return an OK status code of list, we should be able to see this here information. popped up on another screen try this out and here we go here is our list of type commodity so here's a bunch of commodities that we can be using so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video for now just pause the video I should say and we're gonna move on to the next concept here soon alright so that all looked good so far now what we're gonna do is we're gonna read from another API which is gonna return some CSV so I'm gonna go back to postman and I'm going to make a call to the alpha van to JPI, which is going to return some CSV. If you can tell here, data type CSV. This here does use an API key, which I've stored in the global. 
which is stored in environments and then globals. And if I send this here request, of course, we're going to get some CSV back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new controller. Create a new API controller that's empty. Make sure you select API controller and not MVC controller because they are different. Here, I'm going to set this to be stock controller. And inside of the stock controller, we're going to have a route. And that, well, this here is a route, but we're going to have a get, a get route. So it's going to be HTTP get. And here we're just going to have a public, and we're going to return an action result. Get. And in here we're also going to need a string query. Or not even query, I could just have this be symbol. There we go. Return OK for now. So that we don't run into any issues. And we're going to need to create an object for handling this here CSV information, which I've created in another, in another page. But depending on the CSV, uh, the source of that CSV, you're going to need to know what 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 to create that object, like what to base that object off of. So here we have timestamp open, high, low, close, and volume, which we would have to create here. So I'm going to create a model, public class stock add some information there some properties I'm gonna pull up my model here stock has a timestamp which is a date time the stock also has a double value of open double value of high double value of low double value of close and then a double a double value of volume Gonna save this, and now we have to make our API call, which I have over here on another screen, just so that I don't enter some wrong information here. So what I'm gonna do right away is I'm going to get that API key. So to get that API key, what I have to do is I have to do uh, I have to use system.io.file.readAllText. So the key, and I'm gonna do this in a try declare that key up here assign the value of the output of that file which I have stored on my desktop so just system dot IO not IPO dot file dot read all text and we have to enter a raw string so I'm going to do at and then start the string not like that there we go C users R I C K E, which is my username here, desktop A V key dot T X T. That should be good. Catch that exception. Return a bad request if that doesn't work with the exception message. Then what we have to do is we also have to handle any sort of null values. So say you read from a file and it's null, well that's also going to be an issue when we're working with our API here because you can't enter a null API key. Let's save that to get rid of all this, your other stuff. So if the key, or I shouldn't even, yeah, if the key is null or empty,
we're going to return a bad request. See what I'm doing wrong here. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing everything right, so I'm going to pause the video here quick. So that is null or empty was being a little funny here, so I just did if the key dot length is less than I guess it's never going to be less than uh, zero, so I can just do here less than or one, which should work. We're going to return a bad request. Like I said, we can't use an empty key with our call. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to make a call to this API. So string URL is equal to, and we're going to go to our alpha vanta JPI. Grab our information here, our URL here. Paste it here. Now we're not going to be using this here postman syntax. We're just going to add it in here. And of course, we have to create a new we have to create a HTTP object just so that we can make the call to this here. So we could do that, or we could also just do a URL dot get strings from URL, which would also work. So there's multiple ways to multiple ways to handle this. It's like the saying goes, there's many ways to skin a cat, but no matter which way you do it, the cat's not gonna like it. So I'm gonna go and assign here. The prices are equal to URL dot get string from URL dot from CSV. And this is going to throw an issue. I think I have a missing reference here, so I'm going to pause quick. And that was my mistake. I forgot to mention that you need, a in, you need to install this here package. So it's just the service stack package. Install it. Get all the dependencies up to date there. And this here is what you would do. Get string from URL dot from CSV and then we're going to convert that into a list of type stock. So instead of deserializing conventionally, we're just going to do it this here way. And that should be good. Now we're going to return our prices. If we were in a function, we would return our prices at least. And actually, we're not going to want our prices here. We're going to want our prices declared outside of this try. So list of type stock, not even list. I can just do var prices equal to new list of type stock. There we go. Handle this here exception. Return maybe a not found. Just because if we think about this logically and procedurally, if our key is good, which it has to have been based on this here logic, and we made a call to this API and it returned nothing, well, nothing was found, so we just returned a not found. Also, something else that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab this here symbol and change it up. Instead of having that there symbol, we're going to want to grab this, or instead of having the uh, static symbol there, we're just going to want to use this here symbol that we pass in. That should be good. And if everything is good here, we're going to return that list of type stock prices. So we have some sort of issue here. Now, what I'm guessing is this is likely some issue with having a couple dependencies here and not adding the proper stuff to my program.cs. So I'm going to go and get that rectified, and I'll, I'll come back when I find the solution to that. And it was pretty simple. It was ambiguous uh, dependency stuff. So if I get rid of this here and we look at how to solve this, see if that issue comes back. There we go. <coughs> I apologize. If we click on show potential fixes here, we can see that there's two different ones that we could use. We could use the services stack route attribute, or we could use the Microsoft.ASP.Core.MVC.Route attribute. So we want to specify to use this one here, so I'm going to click on that one. This is just the one that comes with ASP.NET Core. 
Going to use that. Click start on here. We're going to try to make a call to this here. And why don't we pass in one of my favorites, Vanguard High Yield, VYM, High Dividend Yield ETF. And this looks great. So we have this year data. We pulled it from CSV, and now we can use it within our program. This is awesome. I'm going to stop this here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and... We, we, well, of course, I should probably backtrack. We can't really do much with just that data. Of course, we could throw this into another API, or we could throw this into the business logic of, of another application. But why not just handle it here? Why not just handle the JSON right here? So what we can do is, since we are using Newtonsoft, maybe, <laughs> probably not, so using newtonsoft.json, well, just, just Newtonsoft for now. What we can do here is we can do a for each var prn prices. And before we do that, we should probably create a list of type double to actually use these here prices. So I'm going to create a new list, or just var l double is equal to new list of type double, not decimal double. And I'm going to add to this list of type double the price dot see here which which would be best price dot close should be good there and what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new j object json object j object or json object they're two different types but they they both do pretty similar stuff one is i believe newton soft and the other one is just system dot ASP.NET Core, or not system, it'd just be ASP.NET Core, so that doesn't go under system. So I'm going to go ahead and create a J object, so var J object, not even J, just JSON, equal to new J JSON object. And these are JSON objects. The nice thing about these J, these JSON objects is we can assign a whole bunch of properties to these JSON objects. They're, they can change. So instead of returning an object, we can just return a JSON object. Now this would be completely dependent on the developer. Some developers like to return that list of type object. Some other developers like to return just JSON. So now we're not just going to return this here action result. Or we can, because as we can tell, it did work before. But it's better to just type these just so that we throw an error, throw an exception if the type isn't correct. That's kind of the that's kind of one of the main reasons to use object oriented programming and a typed language, a strictly typed language like C sharp or Java, just so that we can throw errors and avoid bugs in the future. But for now we're just gonna leave that as is. And to this JSON we're gonna add some some stuff. So why don't we do some operations with the with these here prices? So if we do like some of let's see here, sum of prices, for example. And I'm gonna pull up the great syntax for this because I don't remember it off the top of my head. I did remember it. <laughs> I just didn't want to look like a fool. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is now that we have our sum of prices we do have our list double we added our prices I wonder why it's oh because we don't use it so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna create our property here so our property is gonna be sum of prices and we're gonna add to this here our sum of prices should be good Maybe, let's see here. Well, I'm going to pause quick. I apologize. Just a simple mistake. I tried assigning some values to it during its instantiation. So we're just going to create a new JSON object and then add this here property. We're going to run this here API.
go to our stock. Enter VYM once again. And we're still returning the OK of prices. So instead of returning that OK of prices, we're going to return our JSON. Come on, mouse. There we go. Save that, start that up. Once again, VYM. Perfect, the sum of the prices is this here. We could also try VDE, Vanguard Energy Sector, another one of my favorites. That looks good. And if we break through the application, I like to do this just to make sure that everything looks good. Our symbol looks good. Our key is red. No exception. Key dot length is less than one. Well, that check. It's not. There, we're not even going to enter that condition just because the key is not less than one. Prices. We're going to create a new object there. Read it from that CSV. Have our list of type price. Here they are. Now, of course, I will have a week where we go over just debugging in Visual Studio. And debugging is really good to get used to. I know that I've been mentioning it over and over again inside of our inside of all these lectures, but we're gonna have an actual formal lecture where I go over some debugging, some more in-depth debugging stuff, just because it's very important to get good at debugging. Now some IDEs, uh, some IDEs use pretty similar stuff. So for example, if we were to use Thony for if I were to pull that up. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but this is right here. If I were to run through this, and this is Thony, so I don't have this here module installed with this your Python application, but if, if I were to run this in Visual Studio or VS Code, it would work just fine because I have that installed. Thony runs another version of Python, 3.7.9, and then what I have installed locally is a different version. So you can also do similar stuff so you can break through the code you can do debugging just like this so of course we're going to run into that issue right away try debugging once again but we can step over step into same deal that's just something to get used to there mo most good IDEs have breakthrough and debugging functionality so here we created a list of type double loop through our prices and this is going to be a lot of prices, so I'm just going to continue because we don't really need to go too far in depth with that. But yeah, this is really the basics. Now, I I could go over and add another route, uh, just a post route, but as of right now, we really don't need to do anything with post because this is just the core concepts that we're going to cover this week, and I see no reason to use post this week, and it's something that we've gone over before, so if you do have any questions with post routes just send me a message of course or even drop a comment on YouTube whatever you'd like to do but the assignment will be on D2L and if you have any questions just send me a message on discord so other than that if you have any questions like I said send me a message uh, thank you for watching and take care